What's going on, Packer fans? Happy game day. Welcome into the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Pretty cut and dry episode today. It's a Packer preview show. I'm going to be going all over all of my keys to the game. Uh, I do have to tell you up front, just going to be transparent. Actually recording this on Friday, going to be at the Badger game and in Madison on Saturday. So if any crazy news happened on Saturday, I will not be covering it here. So you're going to have to be on your own for that one. But uh, we pretty much have the injury updates on Friday. Jair Alexander questionable. Uh, probably by listening to this, maybe there's been an update from Schefter or Rappaport or someone that Jair is either playing or he's not. Quite frankly, I don't think Jair's injury, whether he plays or not plays, is going to factor too much into this game. Um, I think Green Bay has the defensive backs to be able to hang with New England's corners, even without Jair. So uh, I don't think that's going to play a huge part. We know Mac Jones is out. We know Lawrence Guy is out. We know Caleb Jones is out. And I think, quite frankly, everything else is rather irrelevant. Even a player the caliber of Jair Alexander in this game, just with Brian Hoyer at quarterback, I don't think matters too much. So luckily, we should be able to go over everything that we need to go over to today, even though I'm recording this on Friday. So let's jump into it right away. Enough about that. Here are my keys to the game. And obviously, we went over the scouting report yesterday. Some of that's going to bleed over into this and kind of how Green Bay matches up. But uh, let's go right from the beginning. Number one. I mentioned yesterday how you can really have the opportunity to make Brian Hoyer and this Patriots offense one-dimensional. And the way to do that is by really controlling the Patriots running game. There's just zero way that New England is going into this game thinking that they can win the game with Brian Hoyer. They're going to know that they have to run the football. I really like Damian Harris. I really like Ramondre Stevenson. I think there's these are two good running backs, but at the same token, like it's not like you're facing Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey, Barry Sanders in his prime. Like They're good running backs. They're fine. I like both of them. I think both of them can help New England win football games, but if you don't have the threat of a deep passing game, if you've got Brian Hoyer at quarterback and you have the ability to stack the box a little bit more, um, guys like Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson should not be able to beat you. So if Green Bay can control this New England running game and hopefully Green Bay on offense gets some points early in this one, uh, then you're making Brian Hoyer and these Patriots wide receivers who also like very similar to their running backs. Like I like Devontae Parker. Nelson Aguilar is not bad. Like they've got some decent wide receivers, but Again, it's not like prime Jerry Rice or Randy Moss are running through the door. So this is a team that when you look at the the talent on the Patriots, I don't know, bottom third of the league in talent, but from a uh, you know, from a coaching standpoint, this is a very, very well coached team. And you have to take them seriously and they can beat you if you don't play your brand of football. But I mentioned this on Happy Hour on Friday. If if Green Bay loses this game, it's not because the Patriots won. It's because the Packers lost. The, the Packers are clearly, clearly, clearly the better football team here. It's why they play the games though. And Green Bay has to go out and play their best brand of football. I think the best way to do that is by controlling New England's running game, making Brian Hoyer pass the ball, making them beat you through the air, and hopefully getting some interceptions along the way. It does feel like Razul Douglas is maybe a little bit overdue for a big interception. Let's mark that one into the uh, prediction category. I'm going to say uh, Douglas gets a pick, but overall, uh, if they can control the run game, it's going to give Green Bay a huge opportunity to win. Number two, and it's sort of in the same vein, but it goes both for the offense and the defense. You go back a week ago, Packers, Buccaneers, second half of that game. A lot of talk was made about the adjustments that Todd Bowles made, going more of like a press man coverage, two safeties over the top. That's all good. And they certainly made that adjustment and it was noteworthy. The bigger thing in the second half is that Tampa Bay played with a very different vigor and energy and intensity and violence and physicality. And I promise you that Bill Belichick and this defense, who are very well coached, are going to want to bring a similar level of physicality. And on the offensive line, those big, meaty, 340-pound offensive linemen that they've got, they're going to want to play physical up front with Green Bay's defense as well. If Green Bay can match the level of intensity and physicality, Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, TJ Slayton, you know, Quay Walker, Devondre Campbell, those guys up front, if they can come to hit and set the edge and disrupt the backfield, Green Bay is going to be in great shape. And then on the other side of the ball, this is not the most physical offensive line in the world. This is more of a finesse offensive line. That doesn't mean you can't have more of a violent physical demeanor and intensity to you. I talked about it with Mike Wall this past week. Like we want to see them have a little bit more finish, have a little get that last shove, that last push. 
Like David Bakhtiari brings that to the table. He's not the most, you know, physically dominating player in the league, but he has that mentality. I want to see that mentality. If Green Bay can go and match New England's physicality, again, it's going to put them in a great opportunity and situation to win this game. Not only win this game, but potentially win it with ease. Number three, two of the players that I was incredibly impressed with in my scouting report of New England this week was Matt Judon and Deatrick Wise four sacks against Baltimore and matching up with them and making sure they do not wreck the game. David Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins, maybe Ash Nyman as well. Those are the guys that are going to have to make sure that they're controlling them. These are not two players like a Zedaria Smith who are moving around a ton, although both of them can do it a little bit. Wise can move inside. You can move Judon around a little bit, but these are primarily going to be on the edge and you just got to make sure that they're not wrecking the game and that they're not causing a forced fumble or forcing an early throw, any of that. And I think with Jenkins and Bakhtiari back and Yash playing pretty darn good football, you have the ability to mitigate them. And it kind of goes right back to the running back and wide receiver combo. Both of these are good players. I really like both of these players, but it's not like, you know, Lawrence Taylor or whatever edge rusher in their prime, like teams have players like this. These are not like your top of the top of the cream of the crop edge rushers or running backs or wide receivers. It's kind of how this entire New England roster is. They've got good players everywhere. They have very few great players, but Judon and Wise will wreck a game if you let them. And it's going to be up to the offensive tackles and Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins to make sure that they stay as quiet as possible. Another player I talked about on uh, Happy Hour was Devontae Parker. I was really impressed with what he put on tape last week against Baltimore. He looks to be really putting things together. And this is late in your career uh, for Devontae Parker to start putting things together, but he looks quick. He looks good in and out of his breaks. He looks good at the catch point. I mentioned it on the scouting report as well. This is not the player you can let beat you. You let Justin Jefferson beat you in week one. They've done better with their wide receiver matchups in week two and week three. But Devontae Parker is the guy that you have to have circled, X, et cetera, that like if he starts to get going, or even maybe before he starts to get going, you make sure that he is accounted for and that he's not getting spaced on the field because these quarterbacks will be looking Devontae Parker's way. He's the guy that even when covered can win at the catch point. He's the guy that can actually gain separation from these wide receivers. So you want to make sure that they're not throwing the ball, even with Brian Hoyer. Take him out of the game and you're going to have a lot easier rest of your day. Number five on my list, beware the tight ends. This is very weird to me because Bill Belichick is a noted tight end lover. He wants to get his ball to the tight ends. He thinks it's a massive mismatch and he's got two pretty darn good ones in Hunter Henry and I love Jonu Smith. I think he's a very good underrated football player and the Patriots paid him as such uh, to the point where he almost might be overrated because he got such a huge deal. But like those are two good tight ends. Hunter Henry on the season, three catches, 28 yards. Jonu Smith, seven catches, 58 yards. Through three games, they are combined 10 catches, 86 yards, averaging about three catches for 30 yards per game combined. I guarantee you that Bill Belichick is looking at his tight end numbers through three games and saying, we have got to get Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith involved, especially without Mac Jones, right? Brian Hoyer probably going to be looking inside to his checkdowns, to his guys he feels comfortable with. Do you know as a quarterback, the player you feel usually most comfortable with and confident in? Your tight end. Because even if you throw a bad ball, they have the opportunity to seal off and just make something happen at the catch point. So there could be a um, a much bigger emphasis on Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry. Quay Walker, Devondre Campbell, Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage, those guys are going to have to be ready uh, because I do think we could see a much bigger helping of those two tight ends. There's no way that those two tight ends end up with terrible numbers throughout the course of the season. So call it the fact that they're due for a bigger game, but uh, I would be very wary of those two. They're, they're just, they got to break out at some point and this could easily be the week. Attack those inside linebackers is number six. Not a huge fan of Juwan Bentley, Mac Wilson, Jelani Tavai, uh, the former Detroit Lion. All of them are okay. Not, none of them are like, you know, freak athletes. They're not that fleet footed. They're not that great in coverage. They're not that great against the run. You can attack these linebackers. And I think if you can get Aaron Jones matched up, if you can get some advantageous matchups, whether it's Josiah DeGuara on a wheel route, I just think there's ways to attack those inside linebackers. Um, I want to attack with Aaron Jones in this game. I think this is a better Jones game than it is a Dylan game. So knowing that, make sure you're doing AJ Dylan in your daily fantasy sports because he'll probably go off for 200 yards and four touchdowns now. Uh, but I do think that this has the opportunity to big, uh, be a big Aaron Jones game and uh, attacking their linebackers is, a, a, I think, a way that that can happen for Green Bay. Just not a huge fan of uh, New England's in this game. 
Number seven, we went over it a second ago, establish the running game. Like I said, I think this is an Aaron Jones game. If you can get him going, if you can get this running game going, it makes you uh, much more dangerous both in your play action game. And it just gets those safeties playing up a little bit more. You don't want to get, listen, I know it's a little bit different. You've got Aaron Rodgers at quarterback and not Brian Hoyer, but it's the same in in a way in that you don't want to get one dimensional. This Patriots defense can be pretty darn good, especially if you make things easy on them. If you can't get the running game going, if you can't get Jones and Dylan going and you have to go pass, 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 this, this defense is good enough. Wise and Judon are good enough on the outside. Christian Barmar can cause a ruckus on the inside. They've got some good coverage guys. Their safeties are really, really smart. So uh, you don't want to get one dimensional. You want to make them think. You want to make them have to stop the run. Uh, so getting that run game going, getting Aaron Jones and Dylan established will be a huge key to this game as well. Number eight, attack Cole Strange and David Andrews on the interior of the offensive line. I think those are matchups that Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary can win. I would like to see some five-man rushes in this game uh, just to get one-on-ones, to dictate the matchups, to get Rashawn Gary on Cole Strange, to get Kenny Clark on David Andrews. If you can get that on passing downs, you're going to have the opportunity to win those reps and get pressure on Brian Hoyer, and I think even get some turnovers out of it as well. So um, I think you. Can, I don't think any of these offensive linemen are good enough that you like have to shy away from them like Tristan Wirfs was a, a week ago where basically Preston Smith had to be a sacrificial lamb going against Wirfs more often than not. So Gary could go up against a, uh, what, like a third string offensive tackle. So um, I don't think there's anything like that, but uh, attack strange, attack Andrews. And I think you can have some success. Number nine, be better defensively on the opening drive. Three opening drives so far this season, touchdown, touchdown, field goal. They've, be, they've allowed almost no points on the season, but 17 of them on those opening drives. So they can be better and you don't allow the New England to march down the field and get points. This defense should be able to hold up. I think this is a low scoring game uh, and uh, we'll get to my prediction at the end, but I think you can hold New England easily under 17 points, if not even better than that. And if you can get off the field on your first drive, that should go a long way in accomplishing that goal. Uh, no special teams mistakes. The, the, the special teams have been a lot better. I think it's been a big point of uh, content this week throughout the Packers sphere. I certainly did an episode on it as well, but Bill Belichick is noted for one of his best special teams units. Matthew Slater, an all-time great special teams player. And this is a team that will take advantage of mistakes if you let them. And you can't have the muff punt by Amari Rogers. You've got to do better as a return team. You know, you've got to have that same intensity with Rudy Ford, Keyshawn Nixon, Dallin Levick, those guys getting down the field. Um, this is a big special teams. This is a game that normally would have been like the number one special teams unit versus the number 32 special teams unit. And New England could have really taken advantage of that. I think Green Bay's made that gap a lot closer and uh, I think can be competitive in this game. You just got to avoid any big special teams mistakes. Number 11, I get Christian Watson going. This this guy is super talented. He's a freak athlete. You got to get the ball in his hands. I would like to see some manufactured touches. We saw some manufactured touches for Sammy Watkins two weeks ago. We saw some manufactured touches for Romeo Dobbs last week. It needs to go to Christian Watson in this game. He needs to be the guy with the ball in his hands and making this Patriots defense really work because the ball in his hands means touchdown opportunities at any given moment. That's how dynamic he is. And I know you want to get the ball to him down the field. I would like to see some deep shots too. Christian Watson's really freaking good. And I want to see the ball in his hands a little bit more and get him some manufactured touches, even if it's on reverses. Hell, put him in the backfield if you need to. Like I'm totally fine with that. So I want to see a little bit more from Christian Watson in this game. Number 12, beware of Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is going to throw everything at you offensively, defensively, special teams, and you have to have counters to whatever he's going to throw at you. you got to be ready for everything. Um, this is going to be a big heavy lifting game for Matt LaFleur. Anytime you go against arguably the greatest coach in any sport of all time uh, in Bill Belichick, he's certainly in the conversation. I would go John Wooden personally, but uh, Bill Belichick certainly in the conversation. You're going to have to have your A game as a coach. And this should, like I said, should be a, a game where Matt LaFleur is going to have to bring his A game. Because if, if Matt LaFleur goes toe to toe with Belichick and comes out, you know, anywhere near even, like the only thing that you, probably the only way you lose this game again, if it's not you losing the game uh, as a team and just having an awful game, is if you get out coached. And I, I just, I think Matt LaFleur is going to hold up just fine. But uh, Bill Belichick, special coach and can throw a variety of different things at you. Green Bay's got to be well prepared in this one. And then number 13 in, in the last one. Um, have a plan 
to get off of press coverage. We talked about it a little bit, but Bill Belichick and these, these corners will be physical and aggressive. I guarantee you they saw what Todd Bowles and company did. I think Green Bay was a little bit slow into getting to some of their man beaters last week. I promise you they'll have a plan. Bill Belichick will not just go to press man. He's going to mix things up. So he's going to make it difficult, right? If he sees that you have a, a press you know, man beater, some bunch formations, some motions, he might just you know have his team go on his own. And if he sees that you guys, you know, the offense are more static and, you know, keeping guys where he is and no bunch formations, he might have you play more press man. So he's going to be well prepared for Green Bay's offense and Green Bay's got to have some counters to that as well. Those are it for the keys to today's game. My final score prediction, I'm going to go Packers 23, Patriots 13. I do think this game will get a little bit, you know, bowling shoe ugly at times. Uh, I think this could be more of a defensive struggle. I think Green Bay is going to go the length of the field, but I think they're going to have to settle for some field goals, unfortunately. Uh, but I still like Green Bay 23, Patriots 13. I don't think the Patriots are going to do much on offense. I think Green Bay easily holds them to under two touchdowns and uh, it ends up being a, still a double digit win for the Packers. That's going to do it for me today. Enjoy Packers Patriots. Should be a fun game at Lambeau Field. Can't believe we're already going to be four games down uh, on this season already. Seems crazy almost a quarter of the way through the regular season. So enjoy these games. They go fast. And before you know it, we'll be talking draft picks again. So uh, enjoy the game day. Go Pack Go. Uh, I will be right back here tomorrow with an all-new episode, breaking everything down. That will be uh, a post-game episode. I will be back in Green Bay to record that. So make sure not to miss it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, and as always, Go Paco.